Welcome to another Virtual Forge security cartoon. This is cross-site scripting, in short, XSS, Lesson 1. To see how this XSS attack works, we'll look at a sample web application. In this case, a platform where users can buy or sell used cars. Of course, all communication is encrypted, and the web server is protected by a firewall. This application has two use cases. Bob here wants to sell a car. He will demonstrate use case one. He sends a request to the server to start the application and receives a list of offers already stored in the database. Since Bob wants to sell his car, he doesn't look at the other entries, but enters his description and submits it to the server. Please note that Bob is logged on to the system and his session identifier is stored in a so-called cookie. This cookie is sent along with every request in order to maintain the session and keep Bob or any other user authenticated. The server receives Bob's ad and stores it in the database along with the other ads. And of course, Bob receives a packet from the server containing a notification that his ad was processed successfully. Alice, on the other hand, wants to buy a car. She will demonstrate use case two. Every now and then, she checks out the current cars on sale. She too is authenticated to the application. Her identity, too, is validated by the server. When she comes back this time, the list also includes Bob's new entry. The list of cars is rendered in her browser. Since it's new and interesting, Alice decides to have a closer look at Bob's ad. Please note that part of Bob's ad has syntax highlighting. The phrase, a lot of extras, is bold. So that's how the application is supposed to work. Some people contribute content, others will read it. Now we need to bring in another player, Mel. Mel is using his lunch break to see if he can hack into some systems and comes across our web server. All good hacking starts with analysis, so Mel first checks out how the application works. Basically, he does the same things Alice just did. Therefore, he receives the same information Alice just did. But he looks at the results a little differently. Why is there some text written in bold letters? It seems that HTML tags are allowed input. Maybe any HTML tags. Let's see if Mel can exploit that. First, he needs a headline that draws attention. Now, what if he enters JavaScript code instead of a detailed description for his car? And what if that code would read the cookie of whoever is opening that page? and send it to Mel's hacker server. Mel saves his malicious ad to the server, and it is processed and stored in the database the same way Bob's ad was before. After this successful little lunch break, all Mel has to do is wait. Wait for someone else to open his malicious ad. Alice is taking another opportunity to check out if there are any new entries in the database. Again, her identity is validated by the server. Unfortunately for Alice, the new list of cars now includes Mel's cross-site scripting attack. 
Since the attack itself is hidden in the description, it will be launched the moment Alice opens the Read More page. Mel's script is now executed in Alice's browser. It will therefore read her cookie and send it off to Mel's web server. Basically, Mel used the vulnerable car sales web server to spread his attack to other users, in this case, to Alice. Mel's server is programmed to immediately send an email to him when any new cookies are delivered. In other words, Mel receives a cookie just a few seconds after it has been stolen. Since Alice's user session is stored in the cookie, Mel just received Alice's current digital identity. All he has to do is load her cookie into his browser, thus impersonating Alice in this web application. Virtually, Mel becomes Malice. With Alice's session, Mel can do everything Alice is entitled to do and see everything Alice is entitled to see. With every request Mel sends out, Alice's cookie is now passed on to the server and validated. And since the cookie contains Alice's current session, the server will actually believe the request really came from Alice. Naturally, this is something Alice doesn't want, but she can't do anything about it. She doesn't even know that this is happening. Let's give you a brief summary. XSS vulnerabilities are easy to spot, easy to exploit, and have a high impact on your business security. And that makes them really dangerous.